Welcome to Book Talk. I'm Winston and I'm going to talk about books. Today we are talking about an entry from the Pocket Quest 2023 Game Design Jam from uh, DriveThruRPG. Uh, theme was space and today's entry is Lost Echoes, a space horror game. Let's take a look at uh, this creature and see, uh, see just what it is. The first thing I want to notice, first thing I want to show off is the claustrophobic formatting on this that uh, intense dark back you know the perfectly black background and then a uh, not really low contrast but a slightly low contrast uh, color choice for the font gives the uh, it gives the whole thing a dim feeling like this is um, it's it's not bright it's uh, not so easy to read you got to kind of focus on what you're doing here and the, uh, the low contrast color palette kind of blends this together. This is, a, this is not a, a design choice of which I'm a fan, but in this case, I really feel like it works to give the, um, to give the thing a sense that it's fading away. So what is Lost Echoes? Lost Echoes, and each character embodies a basic archetype that highlights different stories and features originating from their creation. Lost Echoes is designed for a one-shot game, so there's no specific lore or predetermined story. You find yourself in a desolate location, such as an abandoned spaceship or a deserted planet, and you must strive to survive the hidden horrors of the environment. <clears throat> Basic setup for an escape room game, right? Works really well in this kind of situation. Does the game work really well? There's a couple of uh, couple of steps. You add, you start your character creation. You start with a career, and uh, there's a lot of different familiar archetypes here: the true believer, the brute, a researcher, a rogue. Um, they kind of give you basic uh, basic key attributes and focus your character in a direction. You choose a dark fate, which is something I found really interesting. Different dark fates are abandoned military person, blasphemous heretic, mad scientist, deceiver. Um, and these are, these are things, these are role-playing keys for your character. This is why they are here, possibly. This is the things that uh, drag them down and can possibly provide them boost as they overcome them or succumb to them. Then you have a, a basic dice pool system and you assign dice to the different attributes, uh, skills, also uh, boost your dice pool. <clears throat> you get to add uh, features, uh, different special abilities, keen trickster, not dead yet, mind probe, sense the truth, things like that. Gear adds to your dice pools or modifies your role in other ways uh, and is importantly consumable. And then, uh, of course, you have health and uh, different hazards of the game, low oxygen, radiation zones, that kind of thing. And then um, you get into the the crux of the gameplay. The uh, Actually, we're going to circle back around to that. He, he's got two different ways that they recommend play the game. You can run it as a dungeon crawl, endless horror action, or you can do it as a personal horror where the uh, the characters are just trying to prevent themselves from fading away completely. The gameplay has a fairly standard um, initiative and turns uh, using the dice pools. As you defeat hazards and enemies, you have the possibility of gaining psychic powers, and uh, the psychic powers are at, at a nice uh, touch of reward in the middle of a game that is for the most part all about consuming your resources because everything you do consumes a resource and when you run out of resources when you run out of the ability to make skill checks and to affect your environment game over uh, there's encounters there are several tiers of encounters and uh, all the the basic horror guys are here you got the brain dead soldier the Holo Past, which I particularly liked, a hologram that is programmed for reflecting false images that got some clues from unwillingly made brain scans. 
finds your files and tries to use your information against you. This is a whole plot point in one of the Starman books. It's awesome. <clears throat> the Arcood, which is a, a bug that evolves, an overgrowth mold. I'm a sucker for plant monsters. The Duknara, which I believe is the um, an evolution of the Arcood. You got a hulking berserker. The Nectamora, which is the final evolution of that uh, other bug creature. And then a short design about creating your own uh, creating your own monsters. The last bit, it's only about a uh, only about half a page on a two column thing. Creating your adventures. This is where now the game has no there's no context, there's no setting, there's nothing to go on. So what you are doing here is everything there is. And uh, the characters know very little. At this point, really, the Game Master knows very little. This is a game that is meant to be one, run as a one-shot and um, meant to be run with a little bit of setup, but not a whole lot. The steps in creating an adventure. Uh, divide the game into four acts. Uh, this is important. Got another cinematic structure going on here. Act one, the characters meet, discuss the situation. It's a role-playing opportunity. They can talk about or keep their secrets hidden. Um, then you add in environmental threats, push the team towards, in, towards the adventure. Now, environmental threats, dealing with environmental threats isn't really covered in the main, uh, the main rules. Presumably, it is going to be a, uh, a set of action checks, ch set of skill checks that uh, you have to overcome, or perhaps you'll roleplay through it. Um, you get to search the area for possible tools, and then plunge into Act 2. That's where the first danger comes to light. It could be a group of enemies or a technical issue, something to give the characters something to act against and to suck away some of those resources. After Act 2, they get to uh, give them a chance to uh, wind down a little bit, make some conclusions, which uh, should invariably be wrong, uh, because it is a horror game after all. And... Um, amp up the horror, they recommend infecting somebody with an alien, uh, making things harder and more intense, let them, uh, let them explore, get a little more resources, and then launch into Act 4, which is a final combat, the life and death situation with the big bad. And then you role play out a story conclusion, who survived, how did they survive, and why. It's an interesting exercise, it's an interesting, um, premise and it's the plot of cube or escape room or every uh, any movie like that so there it's it's got legs it's certainly got the right flavor and uh, the designer says that uh, they're going to be developing a larger rule book on this in the future I'll be interested to see what they where they are going with that so as it uh, as it stands, um, got a little bit a little bit of good flavor in here, but uh, that's all there is for me. You might find something uh, more interesting, something that you really latch on to with those dark echoes, or if you lean more towards the uh, role playing and exploring your character side of the game. So that's Lost Echoes. There will be a link in the comments section below. And while you're on Drive Through RPG, check out Opposing Forces. Head over to Drive Through Fiction. Check out the Starman Saga, and of course, you've got uh, my book in the Game Design Jam entry as well, Scrappers. Uh, in the meantime, stay tuned. There's more book talk to come.